Okay, so thanks uh, for the invitation. I think it's a great place to, uh, I, I see many synergies between what we do and some of the presentations we had. Um, so um, the, um, the motivation, so we work in the field of omics, which is a, a big data field. Uh, and as many big data fields, uh, progresses nowadays are driven uh, by, uh, by machine learning and in particular by uh, trained predictive models. So one of the applications in, in genomics is, uh, is uh, answering basic biological questions relating genotype to um, molecular processes in particular in, in, in gene expression. But you have also pervasive applications of uh, machine learning and, and trained predictive models in variant calling, uh, in designing experiments, etc. So there's a need to share, uh, to share those models. The field of omics has been extremely good in, uh, in sharing data. So this fair data principle, I think, as a field we can be proud of, have been uh, implementing them in, uh, very nicely. Uh, we all, there are also very nice efforts in, in standardizing uh, software through um, um, so op open projects such as Bioconductor and Bioconda. But when it comes to those trained predictive models, uh, we are not really uh, there yet. So basically, those trained predictive models are, are usually uh, shared in, in code repositories of individual groups. Uh, sometimes you find them uh, on paper supplements or other uh, maintained web page. So uh, the, the starting point of our project was to, uh, for us to, to try to apply these fair principles now to this uh, very type, uh, particular class of, of software, which are trained predictive models. Uh, and this is, uh, this is our proposition for the field of, of omics called uh, Kipi. So it's a, it's a, Greek, word, uh, a Greek word, which means garden. Um, and it's a collaboration between uh, my lab and the lab of uh, Anshul Kundaji and Oliver Stegle, and hopefully more uh, groups uh, uh, in the future. So I, I'm going to guide you through, uh, through these uh, through this overview figures, uh, which go through, um, on the one hand, on the, on the left part, uh, the, uh, the contributor point of view, then the uh, repository point of view, and then the user point of view. And I, I'd like to also directly now thank uh, the journal Nature Biotechnology, which very uh, um, nicely uh, let this uh, paper uh, open access. Uh, that was a nice con a contribution from them, I, I find. So, um, the, uh, from the contributor point of view, um, the starting, the initial uh, file you need to, to submit, and you may have only to submit this, uh, is, a, is a model description file called model YML. I'm going to guide you through, uh, through this. So, the primary things that uh, Kipi stores is um, as models, and we see models as parameterized functions. And unlike software, here the parameters are fitted and they're fixed. And this is the thing that we, uh, we want to share. Those parameterized functions can be implemented typically they are in Python. You can also, of course, uh, use any Python uh, machine learning framework. And we, have, we are covering with our API uh, all of those uh, machine learning framework. And so what you describe in your model, uh, YML, is the type of, of, uh, of model you, uh, uh, you provide. And then uh, these uh, parameters are also called weights in machine learning. Uh, you share them as, uh, as file on, on repositories such as Zenodo, which gives you then a, a DOI for those files and, and let them be mutable. Um, for machine learning frameworks, you can also uh, serialize the architecture and uh, uh, as well store them uh, on Zenodo. Um, the other um, innovation we had for these models in the field of omics is to um, request contributor to not only share the model, which is a, a mathematical function from numbers to numbers, but also share the, uh, the data loaders, which do all the pre-processing. It's extremely important for, uh, for people to then be able to apply uh, those models. Uh, we are providing with a, with a package called KPSeq a standard uh, pre-processing, which uh, uh, starts from standard files. So you have here the bed files, which define uh, genome intervals, a FASTA file, which contains the sequence, and some functions in, uh, in this package will then give you this so-called one-heart encoding, which is a standard way of representing sequence uh, in machine learning. But of course, if your model has more complicated way to uh, pre-process data, uh, you, uh, you submit on, on KP the, the data loader. The goal is that your model will start from a standard file, and it's then very easy to, uh, to apply it uh, later on. Uh, for dependencies, we rely on, on, on Conda, and so your YML file has to describe the dependency via this uh, Conda. You can also have pip um, in there. 
We, um, we check the, the predictions, and so on the, the contributor has to provide some uh, uh, test files, so here an file, uh, file um, in which uh, input and output are, are provided, and then we make sure that the, the predictions are, are reproducible. Uh, you also uh, describe the schema, which means the uh, dimensions of input and output of your, of your, of your model, as well as some uh, description for users to know what they need to put in and what uh, they will get out. And then there are also um, uh, fields in this YML file uh, that provide general information for the model so that one can uh, quickly browse and find out uh, what each model does, in particular giving the authors a uh, link to the, uh, link to the site, um, to our references so that you can get cited. And also we uh, came up with a few um, tags uh, that allow us to, to group the models by application area. So this is then automatically uh, passed and rendered on the, on the Kipi web page so that users can have quickly an overview of what models uh, do. Now um, a bit more on the, on the repository itself. So each, uh, so GP is essentially a GitHub uh, repository in which each of the uh, models is uh, figured out in a, as, a, as a subfolder. And then um, if you have a very standard, uh, very standard uh, a model which uh, uses KPSeq for data loader, then you indeed only have to provide this YML file and, and that's enough. Uh, if your data loaders are more complicated, you need to also provide them and uh, they, they would show up in your, um, in your folder here. Altogether, we have already ported uh, 23 model groups which cover the uh, uh, major aspects of, of, of gene expression so that we, we can apply it for, for, those, um, for those questions. Um, and then when we go into the individual models, for example, on DNA binding, there are over 650 human transcription factors for which we have good uh, models that can predict their, their binding to DNA. So if you go down to these single uh, molecules, it's altogether over 2,000 models that are already available in TP. Um, you see this automated nightly test. So what we do is we, we, we test uh, the models. Uh, this includes testing all the dependencies, so in, um, installing everything in a fresh kind environment. Um, it includes checking all the, all the, the pipeline from, from, the, from the input data via the data loader into the model, and, and as well the, the predictions uh, match um, those provided in, in those test, um, test files. This testing is done uh, upon any uh, merge request as well as every night uh, uh, on all model groups. Okay, so now the, uh, the user point of view. Uh, our API uh, is implemented for, for Python, R, and command line so that we, have a broad range of, we cover a broad range of possible users. And we provide uh, yeah, helpful uh, functions to, uh, to perform uh, several tasks that I'm gonna go now uh, through uh, together with you. So the, the first task is simply to predict, to use your model and apply it to predict. And that's very useful as we heard uh, yeah, for, for benchmarking. So here I'm giving you an, an example on predicting the binding of transcription factor on DNA. So um, there are several classes of model out there, and these are five uh, models that we've implemented in, uh, in Kipi. Uh, the first one you see here is a so-called position weight matrix scanning. It's a, a very simple model that, that looks at a very uh, narrow uh, region in the, in the DNA. Um, you have more complex models from the deep learning field, deep bind and deep C, as well as FactorNet, which takes on top of DNA also DNA accessibility. And we, implement, and we ported also a model uh, based on a support vector machine. This is to say that you, are, uh, you have the possibility to uh, basically take any predictive models and, and share them in Kipi. You're not linked to deep learning or so. Um, now, if you had to do this benchmark, you will spend quite a bit of time to figure out how each of these uh, software needs to, the data to be pre-processed, make sure that they are, uh, this can be installed on your side. You will have to install the different uh, software. When it comes to deep learning, machine learning framework, it can be a bit uh, tedious. So the fact that we have done this once for all and ported them in TP uh, makes things then easier. So essentially, you have just have these uh, three lines of code uh, uh, to get any of these models. Here, this is a placeholder for, for one of these names here. Uh, TP and create and source activate TP uh, to have the model installed with, together with all the dependencies. And then prediction is done on very standard files, 
uh, you start from bed files and FASTA file. They are all um, passed by the data loaders, sent to the uh, machine learning model, and then the predictions are stored in HDF5 uh, format. So this facilitates benchmarking, and in this case, um, in this case, we could show that uh, all these deep learning models largely improve over classical models, uh, of course. And um, okay, so there's, a, there's really a need for the, for the community, the end user community, to switch to this type of models. And we hope that with Skippy, we can facilitate uh, the application. Uh, for those of you which use uh, workflows, for example, uh, SnakeMake, you will see that the fact that we have a single way to call each of these models facilitates the, the, the development of, of such uh, scripts. Okay, another important uh, application in, um, in genetics is to annotate a variant for particular genomes uh, or uh, for particular genomes. Uh, these variants are typically stored in, in, a, in, for, in a file called a VCF file, which is a standard file format uh, for variants. Um, and because our models are all standardized, we could develop a, a, a unique plugin which works for all uh, DNA sequence based uh, models of KIPI. And so that facilitates uh, the application of those models directly on VCF files, which are the files that are uh, used in practice. So here I'm showing you what we do with in silico metagenesis. Uh, you pass a VCF file, the, um, the reference sequence is extracted, the model is applied to the reference sequence, gives you a prediction, for example, whether I have a likelihood of transcription factor to bind at that place in the genome. Uh, and then we inject in silico the, uh, the alternative allele. We run again the model and we compare these two probabilities, do some transformation, for example, a subtraction, and store it as an annotation back into the VCF file. So that is done very uh, conveniently with a single uh, line of code for any type of models. So this facilitates the application of those models uh, in, uh, in pipelines. Okay, so we have, um, we have collaborated with the, with the company DNA Nexus and they, are, um, they develop an applet uh, to, that's based, that is based on, on KIPI to do these uh, annotations uh, of, of VCF files. So we, yeah, this is, seems to be useful. Okay. Um, One can also be interested more generally, not just at the effect of a single place, a single variant, but more globally uh, within an area. Uh, what are the, the particular bases that contribute to a particular contribution? This is called feature importance score in, uh, in deep learning. And so uh, we have also a plugin that can uh, generally, uh, for uh, all these uh, DNA sequence based models, apply techniques that uh, compute feature importance scores, and we've implemented uh, a few of those uh, techniques. So, here what you see, for example, is that at that location, that SNP is predicted to have a strong effect, uh, but globally it is because it's uh, centered in, a, in one of these GATA motifs, and it seems to be one of the most important places across the whole area. You can do this very uh, easily for multiple models and see if all the models agree or not, which is more or less the case here. Uh, uh, at this location. Okay, another thing that uh, is interesting now for, uh, for people that like building new models is that you can leverage this uh, repository to pull out models and then construct uh, yours. And one of the most uh, efficient way is using something called transfer learning. So transfer learning is a concept that if you have a model that has been trained for a particular task, it's going to be easier to uh, tune it or adapt it to a similar task rather than starting from scratch or learning. So if you know how to speak French, it's going to be easier to learn Spanish than if you start from scratch a new Roman language. Um, so here, the, what we, um, what, um, in the lab, uh, what Anshul Kudaji and, and his team has done is develop a, um, a, a deep neural network which has been trained on 41, uh, 4021 cell types to predict accessibility of DNA. So it's a very large. Uh, model uh, that requires quite a heavy, um, uh, heavy compute time to be fitted. And what we've shown is that once you start with this model and um, train a new model by just changing the last parameters but keep most of them uh, frozen, you can get very quickly a, a pretty accurate model. So what is shown on this uh, axis here is the time it takes you in terms of training epoch to get a good model, if you start from scratch, if you relearn all the models, all the all the weight, um, and it's for in this instance it takes you over a day. Uh, whereas by transfer learning, 
uh, it's in less than four hours, you have a model that is uh, more uh, efficient. And I show you this for this one cell line, but we, we've seen this very systematically for 10 cell lines. Applications on, on your own problems will definitely depend whether or not there are models in TP that are close to your, uh, to your project, uh, to, your, um, to, the, to your task of interest. Uh, but it's generally a good idea to start from some of those existing models ra rather than starting from, uh, from scratch. And finally, uh, one, uh, having this uh, repository of standard models, uh, one can quite easily create ensemble models. So combine models to create uh, new models. And this is a very, uh, uh, very well used strategy uh, to score variance. Most of the, the score, uh, variance scoring uh, methods out there are based on integration of different data and different uh, predictions. Um, but to um, here we, we show uh, we showcase this uh, this example uh, we showcase here this uh, strategy uh, for annotating variants that are um, near splice site. So we are taking uh, variants that are close to splice site and which, according to uh, CleanVar, are either uh, benign or uh, pathogenic, and then trying a model which build which is built on several KIPI models that are related to splicing and create quite quickly a better model. And so I show you the improvements of predictions. As you bring new model into this meta model, your, your rock is, uh, of course, uh, increasing, uh, reaching uh, which one of the yeah, uh, very performant um, uh, model at the end. And so this strategy, I think, um, is, uh, is potentially for the community a better way uh, to, uh, to create new scores in which uh, each group may focus on particular aspect of the biology, and then we can, as a community, openly create these meta, uh, these, uh, these global scores. All right. So to conclude, uh, I hope I could convince you that uh, KP aimed at uh, have done some steps into implementing the fair principles for trained models in in, uh, in genomics. Uh, that this could be a, a good place to, as a community, create better uh, models for uh, for doing this genotype to phenotype uh, map. Um, in the future, we, we hope to, uh, to increase even more the, the number of models we have. One thing that we have in mind, and we've, we've been talking to uh, some challenge organizers, particularly the, the Kaji challenge, is to collaborate with uh, challenge organizers by providing some naive models that are already KP compliant so that users can directly, or challengers can provide their models uh, directly in, uh, uh, in KP. Uh, we are open for further uh, groups to, to join us, to contribute models, or even simply to, to suggest which models uh, they would like to have in KP. And then we are looking already into how to extend the type of omics data modalities going beyond DNA sequence-based models, for example, contract, contract matrices, coverage tracks, or data format spectrometry. And another, uh, I think, interesting direction is to integrate better uh, with the bioinformatics community. And I think the, the talks uh, that uh, were before uh, and you, Salvador, uh, goes very uh, nicely hand in hand. And it would be great to, uh, to make this solid. With this, um, I'd like to thank uh, the people who worked on this. Um, in particular, Giga Orsets. Or uh, with here in the uh, in the uh, in the audience, and is, uh, has been the the lead developer. And I guess if you ask me two technical questions, I will <laughs> point to him. Uh, also, Roman Kreuzhuber from the Stegle Lab, uh, the Kundaji Lab. And if you're interested to uh, to to join us, to uh, join our monthly calls, feel free to send an email to any of us. I would be happy to uh, to open the door. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready to take any question.